Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I have a review for you coming now, which is uh, Land Rover related. So we've got the Land Rover top, we've got the Land Rover behind me. If you haven't seen my channel, Nigel's Land Rover channel, you can see me completely restore this. Um, 2021, I finished working on it in the winter, put the roof on, stored it, and I haven't touched it since, and I need something to get me back into doing it because it's nearly done. I mean, I've rebuilt the engine, gearbox, transfer box. There is not a single nut and bolt left untouched on this. So I thought what I need to do is get my juices flowing again, get my Land Rover interest back up again. So I thought I'll get something that will really, really get that going. So if you've got one of these, as I have, this is the Revel 124 scale um, Land Rover Series 3, probably the best Land Rover kit you can get. Um, then you'll be probably really happy. But if you want something later than Series 3, like a TD5 or or indeed a Puma, uh, like this one is, um, you're knackered. And if you want a short wheelbase, again, you're knackered. There's nothing you can do. But C1 have come to the rescue. Have a look at this. I've been able to hear a boy today. I've got this. This is the, the C1 uh, trans kit for that kit. And I can make this into a Scepter style, or Spectre style, I keep calling them Scepter, Spectre style 90, um, which I'm not even sure if it really exists, but it's, I, I don't want to build a long wheelbase, I want to build a short wheelbase. So this is going, this, this trans kit here will convert this into a modern one of these. And I haven't looked inside the box. It does look like a lovely bit of kit there. Went over to Hero Boy today, saw Steve for the first time in many years. Nine years, I think it is. And um, yeah, picked this up from there. So uh, really, really happy. So as I say, if you're watching this on Nigel's Land Rover channel, then um, get over to Nigel's Modeling Bench and see the review of the kit. If you're watching this on Nigel's Modeling Bench, then get over to Nigel's Land Rover channel and uh, watch a build of the real thing because uh, it's all there, every single nut and bolt. It's not like one of these, take the axles off, paint them, bolt them back on. It is literally every single nut, bolt, screw, everything. Gearbox, transfer box, axles. I've put different diffs in it. I've put different center diff in it. I've completely rebuilt the engine 100%. Um, found some really spooky stuff in there. Rebuilt the gearbox 100%, added a Gwyn Lewis breather kit to the to the vehicle. It's got a lock-in diff now. Um, it's got all sorts and uh, there's lots more to go on there yet. Yeah, like I say, a lot of it's in the house. I need to get um, some, I've got some Gwyn Lewis stuff to go on there, all the uh, steering arms and everything. So uh, yeah, we need to get our ass in gear and get on with it, don't we, this year? Get it done. So um, and by the way, if Sue's watching, thanks Sue. This was bought for me. Uh, by Sue, my ex Mrs. Sue, on my 40th birthday. Uh, as you know, last week was my 60th birthday, so this top is officially 20 years old. Yes, it's a bit raggy and stuff and going a bit tatty on the sleeves, but 20 years old, I mean, Christ Almighty, that just gives you an idea of how good quality, genuine Land Rover gear is. So, um, without further ado, let's get on inside and have a look at this. See you in a minute. Okay, so as I say, if you're watching this from Nigel's Land Rover channel, please hit the subscribe down below and you'll get to see me build the, uh, the this this kit up, the trans kit. Um, if you're here from Nigel's Modeling Bench, then welcome, but go and have a look at my other channel, you'll love it. So, this kit here, this is the Revell 124th kit. It came out 2019, so it's a fairly new tool. It's a very, very nice kit. It's... um. There's a couple of issues in it. They've got the handbrake and the gear levers all messed up for left and right hand drive and they're, you know, but if you know your Land Rovers, you'll know about that. But as I said just now, it's a Series 3, it's a station wagon, it's long wheelbase. Your other options are the Italeri kit, which is an old Eshi kit, and to be honest, it's not very good. Um, you've got the 135th scale. Uh, later wolf kits from Hobby Boss and they're very very nice although they have some issues as well if you go back and look in my back catalogue you'll see I actually converted one it's an it's a 110 and I converted it into a 90 and I did very very detailed work on how to do it so basically for those who don't know series 3 Land Rover you've got the radiator grille is set back from the front you've got leaf springs um, 
basically the bodywork is pretty much the same. They didn't really change much. You don't tend to get this extra thing on the roof for, for a later Land Rover. But basically, you know, aluminium and everything. Later TD5s and Pumas had steel doors. But the overall look and shape of the thing was pretty much the same other than the front end. But where the big differences are, the engine, this would have had a, a 2.2 uh, diesel or petrol engine um, and nothing really much else I don't think uh, as I say leaf springs so the interior would have been a lot different as well so the trans kit is really going to give us something to, to really write home about I have done a review of this kit there's the body there you can see the sort of size of it in my hand it's a it's a big old beast um, and as I say it's probably the best Land Rover kit out there today if you go back and look at my back catalogue I have reviewed this kit but there you go, you can see in here we've got rubber tyres, we've got engine sprues, we've got the chassis here. No, it's not. That's not the chassis. We've got the inner door panels, we've got the bonnet there, that roof cover there, we've got wheels. And then we've got the chassis here, which is all moulded in one piece, which is a nice touch for the newer modeller. And then you've got all the seats in there. Hardly any of this is going to get used, but you do need this kit for the trans kit. So that's the that's the Revell kit there, okay, and it's it's got a beautiful instruction manual. You've got all your different countries for number plates there, and it's got all the colour callouts all the way through, and they're all pretty good. But as I say, be careful with the um, placement of the gear levers, the high low, and the four wheel drive levers and handbrake. It's all a bit cock cock eyed when it comes to left and right hand drive because you do have the choice of doing left and right hand drive. So there we are. So enough about that. Let's stick our body out of the way. This is what we're going to look at. Now, as I say, I went to Hero Boy today and got this. While I'm on the subject, Hero Boy are based in Cheltenham. I think they're in Cheltenham. Let's just look. Their address is... Yes, it is actually Cheltenham. They have got the last lot of Alclad Aquagloss in the 60ml bottles. As you can see here, I've bought four of them. Um... Get over there quick. They had about seven left when I was there this afternoon. If you want some aqua gloss, I think it's the only place you're going to get it. So bear that in mind. Um, this is the C1 models. C1 TK054124 Spectre Star Land Rover Defender 90 Trans Kit for Revell. So as I say, you need the Revell kit to convert. So beautifully packaged, lovely rigid cardboard box. And as we can see straight away, we've got the Puma Star bonnet, which I love. With the, with the bulge in the top um, and then we've got bags and bags we've got photo etch here so let's just see what we've got in here we've got bags of resin parts we've got the, the bonnet there you've actually got a complete body there by the look of it with internals we've got some beautiful tires and then we've got some seats and seat belts and stuff looks like really really nice and then another bag of resin there which is interior bits and pieces so very very nice indeed so let's have a look what we've got let's start with the body um jess is here i don't know if you can see her i think there's a paw there yeah there's a nose what's this jess there we go there's a nose there we are <laughs> she's lovely right so let's have a look in here jess is very interested in bubble wrap she loves it especially these bubble wrap bags no get your nose out jess <laughs> You're not part of this review. You're part of the family. Well, you are my family, but uh, there we go. So lots and lots in here. Um, so let's just push all that to one side. So we've got the body here. And this is obviously a later body. This is a, um, this is a body for a, 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 what they call it now, a country. Oh, I can't think of the name. Uh, but basically it's got the windows in. I don't want that. I'm going to block them off and fill them in. I don't like the windows here either and I don't want the windows there. So I will block them off and fill them in and turn it into a van. Um, but you can see here we've got the basic Land Rover body. If you are going to do a Puma style, these vents here need to go. Because they don't exist on a Puma Land Rover. But other than that, everything is looking good. Uh, got the rear cross member there moulded into the body, which is a nice touch. Because I can imagine having that. As part of the chassis, getting it all to fit dead evenly and square and everything will be a nightmare, just like it is on the real thing. So, very, very nice indeed. Beautiful body. One piece, resin. Looks very, very nice indeed. It is absolutely pouring down outside. 
So you can see now the difference when you look at the 110 and the 90 body, you can see the difference in the size. It's, it's quite a big difference. So uh, yeah, worth, um, worth remembering. Uh, so in that body we had some resin parts here and I intend to do a full review of this because I looked on YouTube and I couldn't find anything with a review of this kit. I couldn't find anything anywhere. So I thought I'll do a full review. Now look at this. We have got, it looks like 3D printed springs and it's saying on here 2 inch lift. You can see down the bottom there it says 2 inch lift. And those springs look like they will actually work. I'm not going to try too hard because I don't want to break them, but they look absolutely stunning. So very, very nice indeed. Beautiful. Here we've got our prop shafts, front and back. We have our forward and our rear radius arms. We have our panard rod and the tie rod from the steering and then we have shock absorbers there they're going to be front or rear I don't know which but yeah very very nice indeed you can see the detail on there um, it says down here two inch lift chassis parts so obviously this one's going to have a two inch lift so beautifully printed beautifully made this kind of looks yeah it is 3d printed but I wonder if it's been cast from a 3d print I'm not sure. It does look 3D printed. And then here we have our front swivels by the look of it. You can see there we have three of them for some reason. Defender axle hub. So there are swivels. And they again are beautifully printed. Very nice indeed. Uh, this is steering links. I don't recognise the parts, but obviously some of this is simplified to make it fit the Rebel kit. But we've got steering links there again, all 3D printed. Um, these are going to be some leaf spring mounts that go in the chassis. There's two of those, because remember, it's not leaf spring mounts, coil spring mounts, because remember the Rebel kit is a Series 3 with leaf springs. And then this is our front leaf spring mount, and that's going to go on the side of the chassis, and this is the shock tower here. And they've got the aftermarket tubular fabricated ones rather than the stock ones. So that's very, very nice indeed the way they've done that. If you know your Land Rovers, you'll know exactly what that is. And there's the other one there. We've got disc brakes with calipers. Very nicely done. And they're vented as well, as you can see there. Beautifully made. Very, very nice indeed. And then here we've got some brass rod and some eyelets. So we've got some brass rod, some tube and some eyelets. So I'm not quite sure what the eyelets are for. It says 2mm washers, so they're obviously spacers for something or other. But, uh, very, very nice. You've got the brass rod and tube in there. So that's all of that lot that came inside the body. So we'll put this away. I'm gonna. I'm, I don't want to stop the camera and do loads of editing, so I'm just going to keep the camera going. You can always fast forward if you get bored. So that's that. And then I've got another bag here, which is very nice indeed. These are sport seats for our Defender. So you can see we've got sports bucket seats. Beautifully made. Very nice indeed. And there's two of those. So uh, keen to see those painted up with some flock or text. I was talking to Steve today over here, boy, the textured paint. I might have to give it a go. Um, let's have a look at this one here. There's another bag of bits and pieces, and we've got a bag within a bag. So that looks like. I'm not quite sure. There is our rear step tow bar. So that's really nice. We've got the tow balls on there as well. As you can see. Beautifully cut. This stuff is beautiful. And then we've got our spotlights. So we've got large ones there. Small ones there. And they've got all the detail on the back of them as well. We've got our air conditioning radiator grill. So the air conditioning radiator grill comes forward. So it has a bulge in it. And I could imagine that most of the 
most of the um, Spectra cars would have had that. So you can see that there. It's got some points I've got to clean off there to make it fit. But you can see how beautiful that's going to look. You can see the fan in behind there. So that's gorgeous. Um, this here, oh, we've got door handles. Look at this. We've got 3D printed door handles. Which are stunning. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's something or other. And then here we have side steps with all the mounts that go on the chassis as well. I'm not going to get them out of the bags. We've got the side steps there, should you wish to use them. I probably won't. I like the off-road kind of look without all the ancillaries and accessories everywhere. Um, what's this one here? Is another bag of interesting parts. So here we have the, this is a Defender, this goes over the front. This is like the modern style ball bar that's, that's pedestrian safe. And then here we've got the front bumper with the winch bracket in there. And then we've got the bash plate that goes up underneath. That's going to go up underneath the, underneath the front here to protect the steering and the axle. And then this is going to fit down here with a winch sticking out the front and we've got the rope and everything for the winch as well. Here we have a load of shackles. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look at this. We've got the shackles with the separate pins. How nice is that? We've got hooks there with the eyelets on them. It's gorgeous all this stuff. It's beautiful. It really is nice. And then here we've got our winch with no drum. I'm guessing that round bit there is the drum and this is the cable you wind around it. And there's some photo watch parts and you've got a worn badge there as well. If you're into your winches you will know that is a worn badge. And that is beautifully moulded. With all the detail on the end and sides and everything. So that's basically your front winch bumper assembly with your hooks and everything. If you look on the C1 website, if I think of it, I'll put a link down below. You'll see that all this stuff is available as separate little units. So if you've got a, you know, you've got one of these and you want to add a winch bumper to it, you, you can just buy this set, I think, and, uh, and build the winch bumper from it. A um, pair of axles here and a bag that's a little bit too small. So let's see how these look. So there we've got the Salisbury rear axle with the bigger diff, um, which is very nice. Beautiful detail on there with the vault detail and everything, which is really nice. And this is the standard Land Rover Rover front axle, which is just the standard axle. If you look at my Land Rover channel, you'll see I've added stiffeners and bigger um, Gwyn Lewis diff pans and everything to them. So yeah, they're they're very nicely done indeed. When you consider all this is made for a kit that was never designed to have to be anything like this. I'll put that away later, I think. Right, here we've got wheel arches. So these look really nice. So they're going to go on the sides of the body like so. so you can see you've got these great big wheel arches going to fit like that and you could also fit them onto your one onto your series three if you wanted to <laughs> look at that they look great um so yeah very nice indeed and they've got all the the recessed bolt detail and they've got the actual the edging molded on there as well around the edge the piping that goes around the edge so very nicely done Still haven't finished with this bag, this box, this, this the, what was in the body. There's loads to come yet. So here we have the wheels and like a five spoke. I can't remember what they're called now, but they are a beautiful wheel. And then we've got the rim locks here moulded separately. Um, the bead locks, should I say, and they're going to go on the outside. Like that. What sort of tyres are on. So they are very nicely done and they're also very wide. 
So beautifully done. I know Chris is going to be watching this. Chris of Rally Car Miniatures and he's going to be like, I want, I want, I want. Here we've got some rope, which is beautiful. 24th scale rope for the uh, to go around the winch bumper. That's going to look really nice. And then finally, from this little lot of stuff, we've got the snorkel. And that is a genuine Land Rover snorkel, which is going over the right hand side, which is correct for a late Land Rover. So there you go. It's got the Land Rover logo moulded in there. So that's all the stuff that came inside the body. So we'll keep that there separate. Let's have a look at these tyres. I know you guys want to see these tyres. These are gorgeous. Obviously you only get four. And uh, these look like they're 3D printed. And they are, they've got Maxis on them. Trepador. Look at that. That's going to get you out of any situation, isn't it? Look at those tyres, they're gorgeous. Beautifully done. Uh, we've got this bag here, which is going to be the roof rack. So we will get this out because it deserves to be looked at because it's so beautifully done. So you've got this rail here. I'm not sure if that's a rail. Short rack support, okay. So that's obviously um, 3D printed. Beautifully done, no seams to deal with or anything. And then this is the actual rack itself, obviously designed for a short wheelbase. So you can put loads of cargo and stuff on there. You could actually use this, this kit to build really whatever you want. And the sky's the little Land Rover. It's a big Meccano set, and you can just do whatever you want with it. Um, we've got this bag here, which I believe is roll cage. We've actually got instructions here. So quick look at the instructions. It's showing us how to build it up. So we've got brass parts and resin parts. You can see that. I'm not sure if it's an external or an internal cage. Oh, yes, it's an external cage. Um, and then you've got the, the actual rack going onto it there. So this external cage is going to go around the body and it's going to look lovely. Very nice indeed. Obviously, if you're building a later sort of cheap and nasty, if you like, simplified Defender, you won't have all these ridges on the roof like this. It's a lot more um, subtle. Um, and obviously, if you want to do a van, you're going to get rid of all this like I am. I'll fill that in. But uh, yeah, very, very nice indeed. I also want to get rid of this on the front here, make it into a proper Puma. But then I suppose for a Spectre it wouldn't be a Puma, would it? So here we've got the brass tubes, all cut to length. Not deburred, but they're cut to length for the roll cage. So that's very nice. And then here we have all our roll cage tubes. So what have we got here? This is incredible. We've got the actual roll cage tube there, but all this here is just support structure. So. You could keep all this for a future build. You've got bits and pieces there if you want chassis braces for a future custom build. Very, very nice indeed. That's going to be the main hoop. It's just lovely. And there's going to be... I'm guessing that's going to be the rear hoop. And then here we've got... That says bottom cross brace and front cross brace. That's going to be the braces going across the top. So it's all beautifully labelled for you. You can't really go wrong. Just make sure you've got some good super glue to stick it all together. And uh, you're going to end up with a really, really beautiful, beautiful looking model. Now my Land Rover, as we've just seen, is Keswick Green. I have some Keswick Green 2K paint. So I will be painting this with that. So that's going to look lovely. Um, or I may go to Steve at Hero Boy and get by some Keswick Green paint from him. So here we've got the internal rear. So it looks like... Okay, so this has been made as per the later pubas where you've got the cutouts for the seats to go in. Um, you may choose to fill those in, get rid of that step if you want to. 
you may choose to get rid of that if you don't want that sort of thing. Um, and it looks like the way they've done this, you don't have to use the bulkhead. Here's the bulkhead here. No, that's the rear door there. These are the side panels, so these are going to go internal there. So you've got the doors and the rear windows there. Okay, so you've got your door panels there with wind-up windows, which I don't have. The only option I had when I ordered, I bought my Land Rover brand new, and the only option I had was the convenience pack, which was electric windows and central locking, purely because I didn't want to have to keep putting the key in the door. Sorry, remote central locking, should I say. And then that panel there is going to go in the back like that. So you can see you've got all the detail internally and externally. You're hardly going to use anything out of that Revell kit at all. There's going to be nothing left. It's going to be, well... You could almost just ask Ravel for a, a sprue, I expect, and keep the kit. So here we have the bonnet, or the hood, wherever you are in the world. Which is very nice. Put the Puma bulge on there. Beautifully done. Will this fit? Obviously it's got this flash on the back, so I can't... One of the things with the Puna bonnet that not, not a lot of people know, they messed up on the width. They made it too wide. They got the corner radius wrong, so the actual hood is actually too wide. It's supposed to be narrower than it is. But, uh, that's going to fit into that one there, so that's going to look lovely on there when it's all done and dusted. So that's our hood, which is beautifully done with all the hinge detail and everything molded in. Uh, here we've got a dashboard and this is going to be a this is a Puma dashboard which a lot of people are converting over to. I'm not going to get this bag out here. Yes I will because there's lots of little greeblies and I know you want to see them because it's the little greeblies that make these kits so special. So here we have we have a gear lever we have a handbrake we have a steering wheel, the console with the indicators and the headlight, um, the wiper stalk, and even the headlight switch on the side there. That's actually the wrong way around, it should be that way. And then we've got the, uh, the ratio lever there. And then we have here the grab handle that goes onto the passenger side of the dashboard. So, yeah. Beautifully done, thoughtfully done, and really, really nice. They really have gone to town here. I can't think of anything they haven't included. The only thing that is a downside with this kit is you don't get an engine. So obviously the engine you get with this is going to be the two, I think it's the 2.2 petrol, um, which wouldn't be appropriate for this later model. So you either just have to glue the bonnet shut or get an LS, put a V8 in there or something. Um, get a V8 from an old Mustang kit or something if you want Ford power. There's your centre cubby box with your cup holders. All you Land Rover fans are not exactly what that is. This is the centre console. I'm guessing this is going to go up behind the dash like that. And you can see here it's left hand drive, which is unfortunate. If you wanted to convert it, it would be quite easy to cut off and put on the other side because they are identical side to side. Um, you can see there, there, that is the Puma dashboard and it's beautifully done. You have some detailed painting to do, all this is mainly just black with a few little splurges on it, but very, very nice indeed. Nicely done. Um, I'm not sure, I saw that those gauges were blank. We haven't looked at the photo etch yet, I'm not sure if we get photo etch dials. Something I am surprised, there's no sort of major instructions that are telling you how to convert the chassis or anything. Um, and then here we have the photo etch. So we have photo etch, tread plate for the bonnet and the, or the hood, and the, um, and the front wings, fenders. We've got windows here, which are all cut in acetate. Uh, we have... The letters here, which are mold made in chrome metal um, decals, so that's very, very nice. You have to put some transfer tape on them, I'm guessing. Uh, so you've got Land Rover, Defender, Rover, Finch, Can, Lucari, so if you want to build specials, you can. 
Um, let's have a look at this photo etch and see if we do actually get instrument panels. I think there's three sheets of photo etch in here. Let's just grab my tweezers and pull them out. They're going to be fun to get back in, they're very tight. Well, there's lots of sheets of photo etch in here, look at it, it's everywhere. For some reason that one does not want to come out. And I don't know why. I really don't know what it's holding. I don't want to pull it because I might bend something. But, um, these will come out. That's for your sills. That's for your rear cross, rear cross member if you're that way inclined. I'm not. What on earth is that stuck on? Very strange. So we can just look at that as it is. That's going to be your tread plate for your sills. You've got tread plate for the rear quarters there, I'm guessing. We've got our grills here that go in the top of the wings. So that's the vents there and the vents in the sides. This is going to be side step plate. So that's if you're going to use the side steps that we saw here. You can put those on there. That's for your rear cross member and obviously that is for your bonnet front wings. So there is no actual instrument panel photo etch, which I thought there might be. Um, is there something behind there? No, there isn't. So yeah, very interesting. Um, there's no decals or anything for the instrument panel. I'm guessing you kind of go online and download some instructions. Because I would have thought, I really would have thought that there would be some instructions for how to shorten the chassis. It's okay saying this is the trans kit to make this, but I would have thought there would be something to tell you how to shorten the chassis. I mean, I'm sure I can work it out because I've done it before on a 135th scale. Oops, I don't want that in there scratching those clear parts. Get out. Get out. So that can go in there like that. There we go. And it looks like nickel silver that photo etch as well, so it's going to be quite nice and rigid to work with. It'll be nice nice to keep easy to keep flat. Better than brass in that respect. So there we are. And then finally we've got this bag here which has got seats, and I'm guessing these are for the back end, for the passenger area. Yeah, these are for the passenger area. So if you don't want to use these, if you want to do a van or whatever, then um, go for it. But uh, you've got the seats there with the side pieces going on, and then they, they swivel out and they mount that way. Uh, 90 wheelbase layout, 110 wheelbase layout. So there you go, if you want to put those in. Not for me, I'm afraid. Not interested in seats in the back. But they are very nicely cast. You can see on here they've got the, the Land Rover logo in the back. Which is beautifully done. And the squab there has got all the detail you could ever wish for. So yeah. Really, really nice. So I'm not going to call it a day there. I'm just going to go and look. At the C1, and there's all the brackets and stuff for mounting the seats, should you wish to use them. I'm going to go and look at the C1 website and see if the actual instructions are downloadable. Because if there's no instructions, then that's pretty poor, in my opinion. Because there should be something there telling us where to cut the chassis, how much to cut out the chassis, and how all this goes together. So let me go and have a look on the website. I'm sure there's going to be downloadable instructions on there. Okay, so I've looked on the website, and if you look on the website and you click on the Land Rover bit and the Spectre Trans kits and all this, 
uh, go to the 90 and it, it's got additional information and there's just 3D CAD models that show you sort of how to assemble all the suspension components onto the chassis where they locate and which parts go where. Um, I was kind of looking in here actually because there's it looks as though there's some small brass Okay, it looks like it's this, you have to cut this to length by the look of it. But there's small brass rods you have to fit in and everything, so it looks like you have to cut that yourself. Um, which is not an issue, I mean, I'm not I'm not complaining, this is by no means for the beginner at all. But um, I would have thought personally there would have been, you know, cut the chassis here, measure from the end 10 millimeters, cut 10 millimeters off here, measure from this cross member, cut 10 millimeters out of there, glue it back together. I thought it would have been like that, but um, it's not. So I've emailed them and I've asked them, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe it's in the website and I can't find it. I don't know, but um, we will have a look. Because clearly it's not just a case, you know, from the front wheel, from the front axle forward, it's identical. And then obviously from the back axle rear, you've got to reduce it from a scale 109, I think it is, to a scale 93, I think they are. Although it's called 90, I think they're 93 inch wheelbase. And although these are called a 110, I think they're 109. Um, but basically you've got to reduce, you've got to reduce the axle center lines, which should be easy enough to do. But you've also got to reduce, you can see the overhang on the back is much different. Um, so it's critical that you get it right because you don't want your model to be all over the place, do you? You don't want it with, with axles like this, you know, you want it to be nice and square. Um, I mean, the chassis, where is the chassis? It's, it's on the top here, luckily. So basically, we're going to be... Come here. Why does nothing want to come out of bags today? What is it? Bloody stuck on. Come on. Right. Um... So basically, you're going to be removing material from. You're going to be removing material from here, and you're going to have to remove some material from here, but also replace the fuel tank. So the rear cross member is going to go. Uh, I would keep some of it to give it some body, uh, so it's going to fit in there perfectly. Um, so you're probably going to cut away the plastic here and then cut the tank out and then cut away some plastic from here and then move it all forward. And as I say, remove some material from here to shorten it uh, because I'm trying to think what this is. I, I don't think that the, the 90 doesn't have this. Uh, in fact, the 90 doesn't have that either. It has a, um, a tubular member coming out. Uh, that's something we can look at. I've got the real one. So I'm going to do a build of this on the channel. I am going to build it on the channel because it will be very, very enjoyable. And also you're going to see me turn this into a van. Um, it's resin, so it's going to be easy to work with. We're going to get rid of these on the front here. I don't know how, quite how I'm going to do that, but we'll get around that somehow. And then, uh, yeah, be very, very nice indeed. And it will be a beautiful, big, bad Land Rover with stonking great wheels on it. You can see it already, can't you? Look at that. So watch this space. Um, I will come back and report at some point if um, C1 models get back to me and we'll go from there. But, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, as I say, if you don't want the 90, you can get the 110, you can get a 110 pickup and you can get a 130 as well. Um, I've got mine from Hero Boy. You can obviously get them direct from the... Um, from the C1 website should you wish but uh, Hero Boy is pretty local to me it's nice to be able to drive over there and have a look and get it in your hands rather than risk anything getting damaged in the post so um, thank you for watching as I say keep your eyes peeled this will get built on the channel I'll see you all very soon bye for now